Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here today. And uh, we are speaking about USB valve, which is a kind of a strange thing that uh, I created. So let's uh, start with uh, a bit of presentation from myself. Uh, my name is Cesare Pizzi, and uh, okay, I work for an Italian company, Sorrent Lab, uh, which is doing a lot of things in IT, and I'm following more or less the, the, the security part uh, in that company. So I'm here today with you because I love hacking, obviously, and also thank you to the organizer because uh, I would like to thank them for such a great event because it's really, uh, really great. And what I do usually in security field, it's... Uh, Let's say I work a lot with open source software. I'm uh, really an open source advocate and uh, I like to participate and to contribute to several open source projects like, uh, I don't know, Volatility, Persistent Sniper, uh, uh, C2s, a lot of other have my contribution in some ways, Pikisi, I had a lot of them. Um, and also I have a couple of major projects run by me directly like Risploit and uh, uh, Sinu or some others. So if you want to have a look to on what I'm doing, uh, just have a look to my GitHub uh, and open issues, uh, get in touch with me also on Twitter with Dreadship. So uh, I'm more than happy to hear from you uh, and to discuss with you about any uh, any things related to security and so on. And uh, okay, sorry for the flashy presentation today. I think I'm going to burn some eyes today because, but uh, okay, I like very much these templates coming from Slide Carnival. And uh, so I decided to use it even if it's a bit, uh, yes, a bit flashy, yeah. Okay, Let, let's now start and go into the presentation and starting from which is the problem I would like to solve, which is, first of all, my problem, because if it's your problem, you will find a solution then uh, you, Maybe uh, also try to find out if it's uh, a problem of someone else, which is even better because at, in this point, in this case, you are going to solve also uh, a problem of someone else. But uh, let's start from my problem, which is USB drives. Uh, and why we may think that USB drives are still an issue in uh, 2023? Because at the beginning, I was thinking that malware spreading via USB was something from the past. Uh, it's not actually the case. Because uh, I started to look around and I see that uh, we have a lot of uh, examples of malware still using USB to spread. And uh, I did a little research for uh, for this and I'm mentioning here some of them. One, it's Mistclock. You can find some great analysis at these links. Okay, they are written a bit, but I will release the slides with the, 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 the repository, so no problem. You can get them. Raspberry Robin, something like uh, NJRAT, try to cry, plug X, uh, some, these names will recur in the, into the presentations, into the presentation, because uh, I would like to show you how this software is actually using USB to spread and why this is an issue for my side and why I try to build something to make these things a little better. And uh, you may think that, yes, in 2023, uh, USB spreading, it's pretty outdated. Actually, you may, you may think why it's still something at these days. First of all, because the implementation is pretty easy. It's a lot easier than uh, implementing any other kind of warming or network spreading or whatever else. It's just a matter of uh, enumerating devices and write something there. Second thing is that probably USB drives are easily exchanged without precautions. Even me that I'm, a, let's say, security uh, guy and so on, I, I see a lot of times uh, USB drives put in some unknown PC and so on without many precautions. And third, the most, probably the most important reason is uh, uh, that al USB allows spillover. So when you deploy a malware, you are in some ways uh, sandbox it in a network or in segmented uh, spaces because you cannot get out of them. And USB allows you to pass this kind of uh, uh, barriers and get maybe in something that is not expected. So I think that that's the reason why this is still used the, and this is still a problem, actually. It's not just something related to malware, actually, because every time you are inserting a USB key in a system, uh, you don't know what is really happening. This is at least what, which is my uh, feeling. When I put a, a, a key in someone else's PC, I still don't know what is going on because I don't have any kind of uh, uh, 
visible uh, action visibility on that and maybe it's, it's not, not just not a matter of uh, something writing on my disk but maybe something is maybe stealing my files do i remember we, which file i had on this key that i'm not using from two months or something like that probably not and so this is why i decided to build usb valve so uh, what it, it is it's a very simple way to uh, have a uh, Visibility on what a, a system is doing with when you insert a USB drive in a system. So it's uh, actually a hardware project. And uh, okay, now we come to this part because uh, it's a keychain. I will see. And uh, okay, yes, it's built on uh, something that it's uh, really easy to find, cheap and well known. And so I decided to build this hardware project on uh, a couple of things which are probably well known, probably you know them. One is the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is something like $6 board. Probably you can find it also for less than this if you look around in, in the internet. And uh, the other, the second part, which is the only other one, the, old, the only other hardware part needed for building this, uh, it's an OLED screen, uh, which is something like eight or maybe less dollars. So with something like $10 or so something more, you can build it. And uh, you can have your own uh, checker for these kind of things. Um, why I decided to go with the PI Pico? Because it is well documented, it has a very good SDK, it is well known, well supported and so on. So it's really a great platform and uh, I would suggest you to use it also for your hardware projects if you have anything about this. So I try to keep, uh, keep uh, things simple in this case. So, uh, at a certain point of the project, I uh, thought to use an, a real SD card in order to emulate the drive and have, have some storage. But then uh, uh, I decided to go with an emulation. So uh, what I'm doing, it's actually um, I'm emulating everything into the RAM of the PI Pico and uh, nothing else is needed other than the two components before. Uh, the very same code should run on any, uh, any RP2040 platforms, like for example, uh, the Arduino Nano has a specific version of the uh, boards uh, with this processor on it. Probably it's overkill because that board also has a lot of other functions and it costs a bit more than a Raspberry Pi. So I think that you can go with the Raspberry Pi Pico and, uh, uh, but it's actually, actually compatible with any platform probably uh, or supporting tiny USB library, sorry, which is the library on which the project has been built. Also, I created a PCB um, because I would like to keep things uh, compact and uh, tough. And so I created a super simple uh, custom PCB where you can put the components on and uh, you can build your own key. And this is what actually results at the end. So this is the final result. You can also build uh, by your own with the instruction in the repository. And now during the presentation, we'll go through uh, an example of how it works and how it actually uh, helps you in securing your USB activities in the future, let's say. There is also, a, if you want, there is also a surprise. I printed a bunch of, okay, this uh, PCB is not mandatory. So you can build your own with... Um, breadboard uh, or whatever you want, just uh, wiring uh, and something. But uh, if you want a PCB, I have some of them here with me. Uh, I'm giving them away. So if you want one for building your, your own, you can just ask me just after the talk. Uh, I will give you one of these uh, without any issue. I have a bunch of them, so not too much, but I'm more than happy to give it to you if uh, if you want to build one. Uh, you, you will see at the end of the presentation if you if you want, actually. So... We spoke about the hardware because that was the hardware part, but obviously this is not only done with hardware because there is also the some software, uh, which is the firmware of this, uh, of this device. And the software, it's based on a tiny USB library, which is uh, uh, a library uh, built to emulate in some way USB activities in a lot of way, actually. So it's a very wide library doing a lot of things. And, uh, what I did is uh, to create a, a fake file system directly on the RAM of the Pico and mon monitoring what is going on when uh, uh, this key is actually 
plug it plug it in into the uh, into system the file system has been crafted in a proper way i use the word crafted here because actually it has been uh, necessary to uh, put things in the proper place in order to avoid false positive and um, something that we will see during the presentation Obviously, I'm exposing more space than what I actually av I have available on the RAM of the Pico because the Pico does not have a lot of RAM. I'm exposing more space. So the system thinks that uh, I'm, you, I'm inserting a USB drive with uh, some space, which is, does not exist actually. But uh, that's not our point because we don't need to store files. We need to monitor activity on the USB part. So not a problem, this one. And uh, okay, we see that uh, uh, how it works. As I said, I had to craft the file system because uh, in uh, in order to have it working in a proper way on both uh, Linux and Windows, uh, uh, I had to place uh, uh, files in specific uh, cluster in specific uh, places in order to avoid caching issue and some fa some other things we will see during the presentation. And I created this fake OS, I'm sorry, fake fa uh, file system, and. Um, this is already done and ready to be loaded. You can also create your own. We will see how at the end of the presentation. If you want to personalize it or customize it, for example, it's, uh, um, you can, you can do it. Uh, no mockery here. The, the fake file system is just a giant array like this one. So <laughs> nothing, it's not rocket science. Uh, it's a giant array done with the things in the, in the, in the proper place. And, uh, okay. Um, what I would like to do now, it's going uh, with you through some field testing because uh, actually I built this and uh, I would like also to show you how and why it is. I think it's still useful to have something like that. Ah, I didn't, I didn't mention that the, um, the PCB has also a convenient uh, uh, hole for using to be a key, ch a key chain like this one. For example, I'm using actually, this is the key of my car. And uh, I'm actually using, even if it's everything exposed, it, it, it is pretty tough. So you can use it actually without uh, breaking anything. And uh, okay, field testing means that uh, we are going to test it uh, with uh, four, uh, four real malwares. And uh, we will see four different techniques used by this malware to trigger execution and to infect through USB. We will see that some of them will be pretty naive. Uh, uh, and not really uh, sophisticated, but then we will see also something more interesting and more uh, difficult to spot uh, to spot out and to uh, to identify. Um, obviously, as I said, these all these malware and all these bio activities will be catched and disposed by USB valve, and we will see some of the uh, samples at the end. Uh, it looks like, when I started this. Uh, Let's say this, this research on the field testing. Uh, I noticed that a lot of uh, authors, malware authors are using US, that are using USB spreading techniques are using uh, .NET executables. At the beginning, I thought it was because maybe we were facing some uh, naive and simple malware, so written by me, but not sophisticated attacker or something like that. And it is true. For example, for a couple of the malware we will see, which are NJRAT and try to cry, for example, NJRAT it's a random, uh, um, sorry, um, an access Trojan and try to cry it's a ransomware. These two are actually not so sophisticated malware, we will see. But uh, we have a, a, a couple of other examples in the same, uh, in the same testing. And one is Raspberry Robin, and the other one is PlugX. And we are facing here a complete different story. We are facing with some real complex malware here, and we will see that uh, uh, they are also using more sophisticated technique to trick the user in, in doing something that it shouldn't. Let's start, <clears throat> sorry, let's start with the very first one, which is NJRAT, uh, which is a pretty simple malware. Uh, this is, uh, Okay, the, it's, as I said, it's the written dot, dot net. And we can see here one of the most basic way of infecting or spreading through USB, which is the usage of uh, the autorun.inf file, which is a file that is saved on, uh, could be, can be saved on a USB in order to be in order to trigger automatic execution of specific, of specific executable. Uh, this is done through, you see, uh, it's not even, 
uh, obfuscated or nothing into the into the malware and uh, it's done in a very clear way what happens is that this is going to write this file pointing to an executable which is in this case uh, in number two the svc host this will be triggered if uh, the system where you are going to uh, put the key has uh, the autoplay function of windows on the autoplay function actually executes this part mostly of the systems right now that does have this disabled so it's not real a uh, a sophisticated way of conducting an, an attack using uh, USB. But okay, it's, uh, it's one of the way they, they can use it as being used by this, uh, this file here. Um, let's go to the second example, which is try to cry. Try to cry, it's a ransomware. Even in this case, uh, we are facing with a, um, very simple one, uh, very simple, very simple ransomware here. Um, and even in this case, we are going to use uh, a very basic way of enumerating uh, the devices and writing uh, on them. And the different technique used by try to cry here is just to create some files, as you can see in point three and four on USB. And uh, these files, okay, are written in Arabic, so probably the target of try to cry was uh, uh, Arabic countries, are... Um, some fancy, fancy name, let's say, uh, in order to trigger the execution from the uh, user. Uh, even in this case, okay, we see some files named important.exe, password.exe, and so on, so that the user maybe double click on them, executing the, um, uh, the, the ransomware itself. So even in this case, nothing, it's really complex or really sophisticated. Uh, we are speaking about uh, field testing here, but mainly about Windows environments, because uh, actually, in this case, uh, USB spreading files, uh, USB, USB spreading malware, it's uh, focused more on Windows. I try to look for um, Linux uh, samples of these kind of things, of this kind of uh, um, spreading, but uh, I didn't find any, probably also because uh, I guess Linux has less the uh, focus on uh, removable device more on file system. So probably it's not really something that uh, we will see in Linux environments because it's, they are more, let's say Linux in general as environment, it's more focused on file system view more than removable or not removable devices. Let's go to something more complex then, uh, because now we are speaking about uh, a different, uh, a different, uh, um, Malware here, Raspberry Robin, uh, it has been uh, um, around starting from probably November, December of the last year. And we had uh, some analysis done on that by Microsoft and their canary. Uh, this malware is pretty complex, it's still around. And uh, it actually used USB to spread, also USB, not only USB, because actually when we come to this kind of malware, we will see that... Uh, uh, the spreading is done through different ways. So USB is one of them. It's not just the 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 only one like the previous two we saw. We have a couple of analyses here done by Raspberry, as I said, uh, from Red Canary and Microsoft. They are very well done, so I have a look to them. And this is the infection chain uh, used by Raspberry Robin, for example. You see here that we are facing something a lot more complex than what we saw before. So it's not just a matter of uh, uh, a simple malware written in .NET and so on. So it's really complex. And if you, wa you really want to go through and to uh, deep dive into the complexity of this, you may have a look to the sample or to this analysis done by Avast, where you see Raspberry Robin and Ro Ro deploying also Roshi Stack, uh, Roshi Tiak, sorry, pronunciation, uh, where you can see that uh, this malware have something like 14 levels of different encryption and obfuscations, one into the other, with a tons of tricks of uh, like anti-VM, anti-debug, uh, anti-sandbox, and so on. So in this case, we are facing with uh, another story. It's, this is coming from an advanced attacker and uh, uh, uses USB as one of the way uh, in, for, for spreading. 
it creates, in this case, it uses a different technique. It creates a LNK file, which is a link file in Windows, disguised as a folder. Uh, it can use a name like recovery or uh, maybe USB drive brands like Samsung or whatever, or Ferbatim or something like that, because uh, in this way it can maybe um, trick you in double click on it with thinking that it, that's a folder because it has actually a icon folder on, on that. And now I would like to have to the last one, which is probably the funniest one, I think, uh, because uh, uh, in some way it, it, it target uh, us like a, a security analyst or a malware, the malware analysts, because uh, PlugX, at, at least in one of some of the samples, has been uh, um, sent out uh, as uh, uh, XDBG DLL, so the famous uh, um, debugger. You can have a look to it in this analysis done by Palo Alto, where uh, you can see this kind of analysis. And here I would like to stop one second, uh, because I would like to per se personally uh, thank you to Duncan, who is the maintainer of uh, XDBG project, who is doing a lot of work on it. Uh, we, I think that as a malware analyst and all the malware analysts uh, are using it, so I would like to ask him uh, I would like to ask you to contribute to, to the project itself uh, by donation or by uh, also working on, on the project. Uh, he already fixed this issue because the issue uh, um, th that is using uh, um, PlugX uh, to spread in this case, it's because uh, it's tried to sideload the LLs into the XDBG. And he already fixed it, uh, actually, as uh, said, as uh, you can see here in, uh, in the commit uh, of, this, of his repository. So big thank you and kudos to Duncan for his hard work on this. Close parentheses and let's go back on the PlugX, which is, as I said, distributed as, as an X32 bridge DLL file, which is siloed when you start X64 DBG application. The payload itself, it's, it's into the X32 bridge that file. So that is something uh, that could be siloed starting. It, it was siloed because now it's, it has been fixed starting XDBG. And what is going on is that uh, we, in various things he's doing, it's also spreading in a similar way of Raspberry Robin. But uh, there is something more, which is uh, very interesting and in very clever from, from, from this point of view. It creates a, a LNK file again, this guy's as a device in this case. And then all the files that uh, are used to spread are saved in a folder named with a Unicode char uh, 00A0, which is a no break space in Unicode. That's pretty interesting because this is a, has a nice effect like this one. So you will see something like this, which is actually a removable disk, the name of the, the disk itself, with a, an icon here. No other files are there because even if you put your check here on display hidden files, nothing else will be displayed because uh, Explorer is not showing files with this non-breaking space in it. And so this is actually what you see. I don't know you, but if I see something like that, I probably wouldn't realize that this is not a real USB drive and I'm, I'm going to double click on it. Uh, it's very probable that I'm, do, I'm going to do that because it's very, very sneaky, it's very, very clever. But what actually you see, and, and this is actually what you see even if you uh, enable the, the check on uh, hidden files because actually it's, they are not, uh, they are also hidden, but they have this uh, additional trick of using this not breakable space. If you have a look uh, on the, um, on the drive itself, you will see the USB valve.lnk file, for example, here. And if you try to type it, you will see pointing to something uh, which is x32dbg.exe but you don't see actually anything there. Switching to, let's say, a more uh, robust file, uh, operating system like uh, Linux, you will start to see something. This is the list of the same directory done uh, from a Linux environment. And you see here at point one, that is, there's this entry here uh, showing uh, something strange because you see an, an, empty, uh, an empty entry of the, file dire of the directory. And if you try to drill down, you will see that going from point one and point two, where we change the, the directory, we see that in point three, we see another folder, which contains some other files and another uh, empty folder here. 
And if you drill down even more, you will get finally to uh, the uh, folder where the payloads be resides. And this is completely hidden into the Explorer view. So I think that this is a very clever and a nice way to, to spread. Now, we saw four different ways from for used by malware for spreading. And uh, I'm sure that you probably said, okay, the first two are pretty much uh, impossible to 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 not to, to notice because it, they are very naive, very very easy to to spot out. The other two, it depends how uh, USB valve it reacts. So what you have to do is just to put your USB valve device into a PC, uh, into a USB port of a PC, just to see what happens. And what you will see at the beginning, it's something like this. So when the boom, the, 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 the board boots up, you will see something like this on the OLED screen because you will have one of the point here is to have immediate output on what is going on. And okay, USB valve run a self test before starting and seeing that everything is okay. This self test is basically a self check on the USB on the fake file system just to check for the integrity. I did it. It's probably overkill because I think it's pretty hard to uh, being able to modify it directly from the USB. It's uh, something that's flashing on the RAM. So, but okay, I had some space, so I did it. And then you will see something. Okay, we are obviously here saying that we are putting this into a Windows system. Obviously, we will something like an access to uh, auto run. Couple of things. Uh, when you see on USB valve something marked with a plus, it means, okay, it's expected, nothing to worry about. If you see something like uh, a, an exclamation mark, it's something that you have to pay attention to. Uh, in this case, why auto run, it's not an issue because, uh, um, as I said before, the auto run.nf, uh, it's used to execute files if autoplay is on. But uh, I actually realized that uh, uh, Windows, is accessing this file in any case. Uh, even if autoplay is off, uh, Windows is trying to access it in a read uh, for reading. And okay, so this is completely expected when you put a USB drive on uh, on the device. So that's fine. Okay, something it's accessing the auto run. Pretty normal. And uh, okay, you will see here the read uh, access uh, beside the the the, um, the sentence the 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 warning here which is not a warning in this case because it's more an informative message as i said with the plus now let's go to case number two we actually inserted our usb valve again in a pc in this case we don't have an access to auto run but uh, we have something like uh, we see here an exclamation mark why because i placed also some canary files on my, my fake file system uh, like a readme for example which are telling us if something is accessing all the file. This should not happen. In a default Windows installation with Windows Defender on, uh, when you put a USB drive uh, in a system, it shouldn't access all the file on the file system. It could happen if uh, you may have, uh, maybe have some other antivirus software. So I saw it during the tests. And, uh, but it's defined that you have to pay attention to because that means that if you are inserting your own drive, in any case, something is going to access everything that is saved on that system. Maybe it's benign because it's an antivirus. Maybe not because maybe it's something it's also stealing your data. I don't know. It depends. Uh, but you at least have this uh, information before doing uh, uh, what you, what you want. So you, you, you put, put your real uh, USB in, in the system. And uh, that's kind of uh, useful information. And uh, the last one, the last case, uh, it's uh, if something it's writing actually on on the on the device itself. In this case, we will see a specific uh, sentence here, a specific warning with the exclamation mark again, because something is actually writing on the USB drive. And this is definitely wrong. This is shouldn't happen in any case, except for one thing that now I tell you, uh, something it's, uh, I don't know, encrypting your file or writing something there, but this is definitely wrong. I saw some false positive in writing files here when uh, 
you put uh, a USB drive in a Windows system where the recycle bins that not exist on the file it's, on the device itself because for some reasons Windows wants to write a recycle bin file. Um, so the file system built on USB valve uh, handle this and uh, have the recycle bin created so you will not see this false positive. But, and if you see this sentence here, that means that you are going to have some issues if you are going to put your own USB into that uh, system. Now, this is the basic functionalities of USB valve. So you have just to put it uh, into a system with a USB cable and you will have immediate feedback. So that's the device. You have immediate feedback on what is going on. Uh, on that system but uh, you can also use it as a more advanced uh, tool in order to do some additional debug and forensics on usb protocol like for example uh, monitoring what is going on in terms of uh, reading and writing uh, at the lowest level at the SCSI level of the usb protocol uh, once you put this device and you, call, you, you connect it to uh, a Windows system, you will get uh, a USB drive, obviously mapped on the system, and an additional COM port uh, that you, you can use to attach your preferred terminal. So you can attach put it UI or whatever you want to this COM port, and you will see something uh, like this. So here I'm mulleting a, a write on the disk, here on the right side, yeah, for you it's right. I'm copying a file, one of the canary file, which is uh, the type, the readme txt in another one. And uh, on the left side, you see what exactly is uh, written on the com port, uh, which are some debug information here saying uh, what is actually going on at uh, uh, SCSI read 10 and write 10 commands uh, on the USB protocol. Uh, it tells you which is the sector written, the size. It also dumps part of the packets, not the entire one, at least not at this release, because uh, dumping the entire 512 bytes is causing some timing issues which are uh, interacting with the protocol. So uh, they are going to break things, but probably it's something that could be, can be fixed. And um, that's an additional way you can you how you how can use it to debug at lowest level what is going on on the uh, USB drive. Another more advanced thing is that you can use it uh, as a debugger in this case because uh, Raspberry Pi Picon and also my PCB expose uh, the three SWD pins, so you can attach, for example, a JLink uh, debugger uh, at the device itself uh, and then run GDB. Uh, on it and so you can have full access to one from one side to the firmware of the usb valve itself and on the activity done on the usb drive so uh, in this case you can have uh, uh, a lot of insight on what is going on so this is another way how you can use the the device now i said before that uh, uh, you can also customize um i i told you i created a file system and it's uh, Pre-built on uh, the uh, on the firmware itself, but uh, I'm also providing a script in order to build your own. Because if you want to you know, change something uh, or try something yourself, you can actually do it. Uh, the procedure is pretty easy from one side and a bit more complex from another. In the, in the sense that, okay, it's pretty easy to create a fake file system. You can just create with these three Linux command. Uh, okay, you can create a file, mount, uh, create a file system on it and then mount it as a file system uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a folder and then create whatever you want. Then you can run maybe the Python script and create the proper giant array that I was speaking, be speaking before to be loaded into USB valve. Uh, but uh, I would like to ask you one thing, if you are going to do this, uh, I would like to work with you maybe because we can improve the project together. So. If you think that uh, it makes sense to create a different file system with some other things and some other files and so on, because you want to monitor specific things, I would like to ask you to open an issue on GitHub where the project is published. And uh, so we can work uh, on it together and uh, maybe improve the project uh, together. So please do it if, uh, if if you have any idea on that. And thank you for that for, uh, in advance. And then also let's go to something that is curious to to try. For example, what I'm 
doing in now that I built this one. It's just to try to put this device in every USB port I found, like in my house, uh, for example, the, the television decoder, the modem, the Steam Deck, uh, or whatever I found just to see if uh, maybe these devices are doing something strange with my data. So I encourage you also to do that uh, because it's quite funny to see. And uh, last part, it's about open sourcing everything, obviously, because as I said, I'm uh, an open source uh, advocate. So uh, everything I do, uh, it's usually released in this way, uh, unless very few things that are too bad written to, to be shared. That's the only reason why I'm not sharing, because <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> to, to, to show you how bad am I uh, at, at writing code. And uh, so everything is published uh, on my GitHub uh, under the repository of USB Valve. Uh, everything is there. You can build your own. You can also download, if you want, the PCB Gerber file, so you can print your, if you want, uh, but I remind you to ask me for one if you want to build one. And um, okay, that's the repository. So you can find building instruction for both the PCB version or your own version. So you can just uh, download everything from there. And now, okay, let's go to the credit parts because I would like to obviously thank some, a lot of people actually. Like, for example, the Tiny USB project, which is uh, the, 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 the group who built the, the library, Adafruit, because I actually used uh, the Arduino IDE for uh, a Raspberry Pi Pico, even if uh, I'm thinking that it makes sense to migrate directly to the Pico SDK, to be honest, because it's uh, more uh, supported and so on. So probably I will go to that direction, but so far I use that part uh, and... Uh, Okay, so I also to thanks all the people do, who did the analysis that I mentioned in my presentation. Also, the presentation template provided by Slides Carnival. And uh, so, I think at the, we are at the end. So you can take your glass sunglasses off because the presentation is going to, to be finished. And uh, okay, if you have any question, I'm here. Any questions? No. Come on. Anyway, if you then have any question, maybe it came to you later on, just write me a message on GitHub or on Twitter. Okay. Yeah, uh, very interesting this tool you're doing. Uh, what was the. Sorry, I don't see yeah. you. Where? Ah, okay. uh, just yeah. here. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, what was the most strange thing you saw that um, that something did all with your device? So you showed that it reads some devices. It as it reads some files. It can write new files. Did you see something where it tried to attack the firmware or so, which would theoretically also be possible? And would you see something like that, like uh, try to attack the firmware of the USB device? So far, so far, I didn't see at least from from. I, I tried to. To use it as a, let's say, canary to see what is doing, what, what uh, devices are doing. So far, I didn't see anything strange directly from, uh, let's say, uh, home devices or something like that. The most thing, the, the strangest things are done by, uh, let's say, the malwares we saw uh, in the analysis. Uh, so, so far, I actually didn't uh, saw anything strange yet, but, uh, I'm still researching on it, so on it, so I think that something could came came out from that. Thank you. Very good. Okay, I have one more question. Sure. Because uh, your device by default exposes a serial port and it's named USB valve. Do you think that some malware in the future can just detect that it's not an actual USB stick? It's just a USB valve and then just yes. not do any suspicious stuff. Definitely, yes. That's why actually it's provided as open source. So we can rebuild the firmware very easily, just renaming uh, with your own uh, name. And that's, act that's actually a point, yes, for sure. Uh, you mean, okay, you can also hide the, hide the COM port, for example. Uh, okay. It's something that can be done, for example, yeah. But that's actually a point. And uh, I think that it could be easily solved by... 
for it's, one of the things that probably have to do is provide a kind of, uh, let's say, firmware that uh, randomize uh, names of uh, the disk itself uh, or uh, uh, the comp port and so on. So that's, except, that's a good idea, for example. Okay, yeah, thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, there is one question. Uh, have you considered to also have it work the other way around? For example, to detect any kind of bad USB sticks that expose something else than just mass storage? So, you, mm, so basically being USB host where you can plug in a USB stick you don't trust? Ah, okay. On the opposite side, you mean? Yeah. Uh, good point. Uh, I think that's something that could be... In this case, it's a bit, uh, uh, let's say, since in this case, uh, you, the only way you can get infected by something like that is that uh, is uh, more under your control. I mean, if you're going to put a um, USB drive which is infected in your system, uh, it's your system, you know that uh, maybe, I don't know, you have autoplay run, uh, or autoplay activated or whatever, because you have control on the system where you have to put the, the device itself. Uh, here I thought it the other way around because uh, it's actually something I don't have control to because I have to put my key into an unknown system where it's become more useful in my opinion. But yeah, in any case, that's something that uh, could be, we can think about use case about that. Yeah. Over, over here, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, I've looked at a project a long time ago called Face Dancer. Have you perhaps looked at it also? And Face Dancer, you mean? Face Dancer, yes. Yeah, it's something uh, which could be similar uh, in terms that uh, uh, Face Dancer is more a uh, framework in this case because it offers a lot of other functionalities. The point here is to build something that ca you can bring in your keys and have it ready for uh, whenever you want to, to test something. Face Dancer, uh, it requires a bit more, um, computer power, let's say, because it requires specific boards, which are bigger than this for sure. And, uh, it also offers a more, fu more functionalities than this. That's for sure. So, but uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, it's something that it's, uh, has the similar functionalities, but this is built for specific usage like this one and to be also be carried out together with us. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, so thank you again for the presentation. Thank you very much.